Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Yes. He's worthy. He's worthy. Give me about 10 to 15 minutes. We gonna go. Uh, you can go to Jeremiah 29 11. Uh, I had some other verses, but I believe when you study the text, you spend time with the Lord, you're going to give the one verse and I'll tie all in the other stuff the way that he wants me to to get the point to you later. But we're going to stay on this uh, on this thing of the righteous conversation, but now we're going to move on to the righteous report. Because if you understand, after you have your conversation with God, typically... A report is defined as giving a spoken or written account of something that one has observed, heard, done, or investigated. And if God, you had your righteous conversation with God, typically following that, there ought to be a report. He's going to do a follow-up on what you got going on in your life. There ought to be a report that you have the victory in whatever God, you, whatever conversation you have with God, whatever he told you to have, you can get and you can do, that the report ought to come back that you got it. So I understand that what God had told me to tell y'all last week about that you know you at the finish line, y'all done crossed over, you be at the new chapter. So understand that during that new chapter, I don't know about you, but the minute that that word was spoken, some things started to start coming up out of nowhere, trying to attack the very, very thing that God had said was not going to happen. So I don't know about y'all, but some of y'all might be tired in your bodies. Some stuff might have popped up on you, but God has to tell me to let you know that you still, now you done had the righteous conversation, now you need to stay in the vein of the righteous report. Because Jeremiah says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. See, that's, that's not, I didn't say I said it. Gilbert didn't say I have the plans for you. God said he had the plans for you. So if God said he has the plans for you, you can't know nothing on this earth, natural or unnatural, change the conversation. Change God's word and change God's intention for your life. So don't worry about what popped up on you this week. Just go on and get used to it. But you're going to have to understand something that you still going to have to keep walking and going to this new chapter in your life. You can't keep stop walking it out just because something came up to upset you. Something came up to mess you up. Listen, we slip and we fall, but we got to get back up and keep going. Because you have the conversation with us. We're going to go back to Samuel and David. Y'all can take a seat if you will. I don't want to hold you up long. I told you to give me like 10 minutes. We're going to get ready to go. Because I understand that uh, y'all been working hard this week. Some of y'all tired in your bodies. And you've been fighting for spiritual battles this week. You know what I'm saying? But I'm here to let you know that there's deliverance and there's power and victory in the name of Jesus. I told y'all how David had uh, in Samuel's first Samuel, uh, first Samuel uh, 30. And uh, it's 1 through 20. You can read that later. But I told y'all how David had David had came back from Ziklag and how he had uh, Ziklag, he got home and everything was gone. And what he had did was, is, this is very, I keep, it keeps staying in my spirit and my mind and how after everything he did and he got home and you had absolutely nothing, he cried till he couldn't cry anymore. But he encouraged himself, but I like how he went to the, to the priest and asked the priest for the priestly garment so that he can go to God. And he talked to God and God told him to go. So after this part, David had left to go get what God told him to go get. Now I told y'all he had the conversation. David went and took 600 people with him to go get what was taken from him. But when he got to the brook, 200 of them said they couldn't go no more. Now I want you to understand something. When you have the conversation and you cross the finish line, you begin a new chapter in your life. That when you're getting ready to go recover all that God says you can have, that you get lost and you're going to begin your restoration, everybody can't go with you. 
They might have been your, your BFF for the last 15 years. But now you done turned the corner on America. They might not be able to go with you. They got tired and stayed there. But this is the part I like about it because when they went somewhere, they said that they came upon a man who was, uh, if you look in the, in, the, in the verse of the text, it says that he came upon the man and that he was an Egyptian in the field and they took him. Now, some people, I don't know how they take and interpret the text, but this man, they took him and they showed him Christian kindness. Mm -hmm. They fed the man because he ain't had no food or water, gave him some water, got him a strength. And come to find out, this man had worked for the enemy. And this very same man said, David said, who do you belong to and where are you from? I want y'all to remember that, that, that question right there. Who do you belong to and where are you from? So understand something. When you're walking and you come upon something or someone, there's nothing wrong with finding out who they belong to, where they stand, and where they're coming from in your life. Because they might not be for you. There's nothing wrong with asking that question. David had authority. David said, who do you belong to and where do you come? And he told them that I was with the Amicalites that raided you. And I guess I got sick and my master discarded me and threw me to the side. So when you are going through this journey, you do not know who's going to help you get your victory. Don't kill the person that you might come upon. You can ask them where they're coming from, but don't mean you got to kill them. Because this very same person took David and led them to the enemy where they were at. And the Bible says that while they went to them, that when he says, hey, look, I'm going to take you to him, but you got to promise me you won't kill me. So, so when they made the covenant, they said, all right, we don't already fed you and took care of you. Yeah, if you know where they're at, take me to the enemy. So the exposure that the enemy had is very important here because what I like about this part is that when he took him to him, he said they was having a party. They were celebrating the victory. They were celebrating the victory that they had over David and they raided Ziklag. But it was shortly after this that David went and pounced on them. They didn't say David went down there and took a walk. They didn't say David blew the horn. I don't know. I had to do a little more study of the text. They said David pounced upon them. That means he didn't take long to get to the enemy. There's going to be sometimes y'all can't take long to, to, to fight the enemy. Y'all don't need to have a plan of strategic attack. He had 600. He started out with 600, got to 400. 400 might be all you need to do to get what you got to get done. And he went down and he attacked them. But the part I liked about this part was they was having a party. And isn't it funny how when y'all think the devil's having a party in your name and he thinks he's stamping on your grave that God will sit up and move and give you the victory so quick fast and there ain't not even funny. This is what he was doing. But I like the part about who do you belong to and where are you from? Because y'all know that part in Job. In Job, there was a part there in Job 1 and 6, uh, chapter 1, excuse me, that there's a day, they said, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered and said, I am going to and from an earth and from walking up and down. Now remember, where, who do you belong to and where are you coming from? I find it hard that when we have righteous conversations that immediately attacks become because I begin to ask myself, God, if only me and you was in the conversation, how does the enemy know to come upon me? The devil can't really be around God unless God allows him to be in your midst. So how I'm going to tie it together, the way that God gave it to me was, it's really not the fact that the devil knows about what's going on and that there's rumblings that he's in there for the conversation. He already has an assignment to still kill and destroy. But what happens is, is once you have me, once you get through that trial and tribulation, you have the victory, you need to understand something. Whatever demon, whatever imp, whatever wizard, whatever, whatever was it was, got defeated. And it went back to hell. And he had to report to his master. Because remember, his assignment was to take you out. So all of a sudden, here come this thing. Because you know what? I thought about this. I'm tired of we talking about Jacob walking with a limp, sir. I want to know why we don't talk about these demons walking back to the devil with a limp when he, come, when he came up against you. He ought to be walking. You ain't the only one that ought to be. Yeah. Walking down broke, beat up and disgusted. You don't need to be on walk around. That demon needs to be walking around. And when he goes back, the devil's like, where, do you, where are you coming from? You had an assignment to take Gilbert out. Well, let me tell you, that thing got some power. I thought I had stopped him. Because... 
I started talking in his mind and making stuff to events, but then he started talking to God. And when he started talking to God, God sort of reminded him, boy, didn't I tell you I know the plans that I have for you? And once God reminded me, I started saying I could get up. And then I started realizing, y'all forgive me, I'm excited about it. I preached it yesterday, y'all just wasn't there for it. And I said, oh my God, I can get you back in the fight. You need to understand something. The fight wasn't quick because in the Samuel, David had to fight them for almost two and a half days. So just because you wrestle with that thing for one day don't mean you ought to stop. You ought to keep saying, I plead the blood of Jesus. I know who I am. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm still speaking into my life. My sons will be doing great. My children will be doing great. Keep saying it. I'm the head and not the tail. Keep saying it. But you're going to have to wrestle with that thing. Yes, sir. Yes. You better talk about it. But guess what? After the two and a half days was over, yes, David, they said, and the Bible says David recovered everything. Everything's restored to him. Now imagine if David had said, I only got 400 people in that city. Imagine if he's just stopped. But hold on, he went with his praise and worship with the ephod. I told y'all about the ephod. And said, God had told him. God, and God didn't give a long plan out speech. He said, surely go get them, for you shall recover all. Yeah. So what has God told you in your conversation? What report are you going to give him? And more importantly, whose report you're going to believe? God or some man telling you you can't have it? Even yourself telling you you can't have it. Stand up, we get ready to go. I told y'all, we ain't going to be here long. Because, because I like this part. The devil had to have a report yeah. of what he was doing. Yeah. But God required him to answer to him. Yeah. But he also had the angels to answer him. So I also want to take this point to you. Yeah. What a report has the angels given to you? Uh, Didn't I send you out told you to go bless that person? Yeah. Didn't they receive their blessing? Yeah. Didn't they take it with them? Yeah. The angel ought to be coming back. Well, God, I went and I fought a battle. I had to fight a battle, but I gave him the blessing. And now the, your will is being done on earth as you already had designed it in heaven. That's the Bible. So the devil wants to know every now and then he need to have some demons coming back and need to be carrying one another. What happened? I tried to open that church of Mother Life Ministries. And I thought I was going to disrupt the service. I thought I was going to tap the pastor's mind with this situation. I thought I was going to get his family. I thought I was going to get the saints. But let me tell you something. They started praising. They started worshiping. They started warring in the spirits. And my God, the whole stuff before you know it, we was flooded. Yeah. We had to leave. Yeah. Because they said, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And when they say, in the name of Jesus, everything has to answer to it. Yeah. So when I plead the blood, oh, we can't stand up against the blood. Oh. We can't stand up against the blood of Jesus. Yeah. The Holy Spirit started to work. Oh, God, hold on. He said, you'll have power to cast out demons, yeah. to tell sickness to flee. Yeah. So you know you got this power. Why did you speak to that situation? Yeah. God gave it to you. He told you the conversation. Yes. Now give the report. Yes, yes God, I, I stood up against that demon. Oh, yeah. I stood up against that situation. I'm still here. I lasted through that week. Yeah. I preached the good message, and now I'm going to attack you. Okay, come on then. Oh, yeah. And now the devil's asking, hold on. Uh, uh, I wasn't there for the conversation, but something going on over here. I sent my imps, but they keep coming back to me defeated. Didn't I just send you out here yesterday? What you doing back here today? Didn't I just send you out here 30 seconds ago? I tried. <laughs> Devil, I tried. <laughs> but I lost. <laughs> oh, my God. I lost. And then when the big demons come, oh, I tried. I tried, but I was wrestling with them. And just when I thought I had them, I thought I had them pinned to the ground. Some strength came up. Some came up from behind me and threw me on my side. Some pissed me and sent me back and told me, go back to hell, and I had to go. I told you I was dead. We're done. I can't tell you no more. The righteous report. Whose report you going to believe? Because they said that David had a spoil. They said, this is David's spoil. So my question is, Whose name does your spoil have on it? Does it have your name on it? Is it, is it Cassandra's spoil? Or did you let somebody else get it because you didn't want to fight the battle? Let, let, listen, the one who left at the brook, they, they know it was nice to him and said they could still have it. But, but here's the thing, they couldn't go with you to fight. He had to take 400, but 200 said, we tired, we can't go, boss. We can't go. And David said, okay. 
Because I'm sure that David's focus was on getting his family. See, oh my God. David's focus was getting his family. And when you make up in your mind to get your family, everything, every demon up in hell is going to try to come up against you. But remember, he said, surely you will recover all. Now, he didn't say you're going to get one cousin. He didn't say you're going to get two cousins. He didn't say you're just going to get one son, one daughter, even though you got four. He said you're going to get all of them. All of them. Oh, Lord, and when he got it, he got restored. So they said, hold on, they said they were singing praises. Yes. So listen, don't tell nobody. Look, from this point moving forward, if you got a praise and you got to take a break, go around the corner somewhere, mm. put your headphones on. Mm. I'm finding faith in that people can put their headphones on and listen to what they want to listen yes. to. Yes. But I can't put my headphones at the desk and listen to them gospel if I want to get up on my chair. Yes. I and I might want to start doing something. Don't, listen, don't bother me. Yes. It's all right. Who's report you gonna believe? You need to start sending some demons back beat up. Yes, sir. So they need to know. The devil, oh, hold on, I, I, it just stayed with me. They need to go back beat up. It's not that he was in the conversation, he doesn't know what's going on. Because remember what he said about Job, he said, I could get to him, but there's a, a hedge of protection around him. So he can't see what's going on once God is around you. That means he has to ask the question. And then God got bold and said, have you tried it? Because I know what I made. And when I know what I made and I know the design what it's for, I know what it's designed to do. Yeah. And some of us have been designed to be victorious spiritually yeah. and naturally. Yeah. So that means nothing can stop you. As long as you're with God. Yeah. Not in your power. But I can tell you right now, my power fades out from time to time. Yeah. It's in good shape. I think I can be Brother Willie. My power can go out. And my mental will can break. Yes. And I might go from blessing you mm -hmm. to cursing you. All right. Listen, just because you think, don't think this flesh don't rise up in you. I know some people can speak in 15 tongues. And if you get them mad enough, you hear a different tongue, then that wasn't nothing other than Lord. But it's the truth. So you need to stay within the Holy Ghost power. Stay in the Holy Ghost power. Stand, stand, stand. We're going, we're going. I told y'all, we were the righteous conversation. Now we move into the righteous report. I told y'all we ain't going to be long. God, yes, I told you he's going to tie it all together because David stayed with me. David fought. But see, understand, that fight it wasn't a quick fight. Yeah, see? Come on. It wasn't a quick fight. Sometimes we want a quick fight, Tugger, yes. but we got to stay and fight. Yes. We can't leave the fight. But I mean, what would happen if he just said, oh, you know what? I only got 400. It don't look like we win it. Mm -hmm. But I like this part. Mm -hmm. The demons were too busy celebrating to realize that David was even there. Mm -hmm. And before and David got smart, they're not paying attention. They over here celebrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got them to slip up. Mm -hmm. I got them to stop praying for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The next 30 seconds, I'm going to pray again. Right. And move so quick on them. Right. And they said, oh, wait a minute. Because they said, hold on. And it got so bad that they didn't really lead too much of the enemy. I said the number was, I think it said 304. And I got to look it up again. But they started running on camels. I don't know about y'all. Camels can run, but they can't run that fast. <laughs> But they whooped the enemy so bad they had enough sense that they had to leave. They realized they couldn't say. So imagine after you thought you did all this hard work to plunder, the enemy did all this work, guess what? They had to run back to their master and tell them they lost. My goodness. My goodness. That's the Bible. That's the word. And you need to stay. You know what I remember that song we used to sing? Um, and, the, and it came to me. Because you know Sunday school. Sunday school is such a wonderful thing. It says, B-I-B-L-E. Yes. That's the word for me. Yes. I stand on the word, the word of God. Yes. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes. And y'all need to say that. Yes. What did the Bible say? Yes. Because whatever God's spoken word God gives you, yes. it's going to be in the word. Yes. It, it, I don't care what nobody else tell you. Whatever spoken word God gives you, it's going to be backed by the Bible. Yes. So don't you give up on nobody. Yes. Just because you got to this new chapter, I know y'all was excited because y'all was like, I got a new chapter. Yeah, yeah, I put on my good clothes. I'm looking good. Here come a couple of things. Don't y'all worry about a couple of small things. You keep on going. You keep on, I said it's a new chapter. I mean, you got the one trial and tribulation just because a new chapter don't mean you're going to have some new trials and tribulations. But the problem, the difference is, not the problem is, you already made it through that one, so you should be stronger to go through this one. And here's the thing, because you made it. Oh my God. 
because you made it through. And if God gave it to you, then that'll be the even more reason why the Lord you can make it through this next chapter and be even more victorious. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. Because we had the conversation and now you remind us that we ought to have a good report. Matter of fact, we do have a good report. We have the victory and we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. Strengthen your people now, God, and give them rest. Give them rest, God, in the name of Jesus. Continue to bless and outpour your spirit upon them. That, that God have enough room enough to receive it, God. Flood them, flood them, flood them right now, God. And every demonic assignment, every attack that the devil continues to send, God, we send the demons back to hell right now in the name of Jesus, God, because we have the victory. They thought they were having a party, but they told they messed up, God, and they took a break by having a party. So now we're going to have a party and a victory praise in your name so we can give the report, the report that we have the victory. It's in your name we pray, God. We thank you. We thank you. We glorify you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.